All right, Power Ranger fans, this morning we had the special once and always drop on Netflix. As a 90s kid, Power Rangers fan, since I, you know, even before I could speak, this was quite the experience. I watched it at 3.02. Yes, I was up. I was alert. I was awake. I was ready to go. And when I saw this special, I felt like a little kid again. Once and always was truly, truly, truly a great experience. Uh, I know my nephew was mad because obviously he had to go to school. So, uh, you know, I kind of rubbed it in his face like, hey, man, I want to be up. I want to be up and I want to watch this thing. And he won't be able to watch it until he gets home in a few hours. So he's going to be really excited. But then at the same time, mad that I saw it without him. But hey, hey, I, I told him, I look, man. This is for me. <laughs> I know it's for all Power Ranger fans, but it's like, man, th 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 hey, 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 today I'm a little kid. So what did I think of the special? Now, in terms of enjoyment factor, oh, man, from the music, seeing, you know, old faces, OG characters coming back into their roles, learning a little bit, you know, about what they've been up to in terms of their uh, life outside of uh, being Rangers. It was great. Was it perfect? Not really. But here's the thing, though. It, it, it's Power Rangers. But it's not just Power Rangers. It's Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. Yeah, there are cheesy one-liners. Yeah, there are cheesy lines. But at the same time, this special felt true to the series that it was honoring for its 30th anniversary. And I mean, when you look at Power Rangers from back in the day, compared to like little things they did in this uh, special on Netflix, I remember when the first trailer dropped and I think it was uh, Robo Rita that said, I'm going to kill you all. And I'm like, oh, I'm a 31 year old man. I've seen all kinds of movies and whatnot, you know, in my years. But to be a gap, you know, to actually gasp hearing a Power Rangers character say the word kill or die, that's a big deal because in Power Rangers, they've always, it's been kid friendly. So hearing something, the audacity for them to use a word like this, it's the same feeling I had when uh, back in uh, middle school, I had just started getting into Dragon Ball Z around sixth grade. A friend of mine who was falling out of the series, I bought a few DVDs from them for like a couple bucks. What was it? Uh, the Tree of Might, the Turles film. And he went, who the hell are you? And I'm like, what the? They cussing cartoons? Yeah. But in any case, in Power Rangers, it, it took me aback to just hear the words kill and whatnot. Uh, there were some graphic moments where I'm like, whoa, I'm not used to this. Like, you know, seeing people or mainly in this case, robots getting impaled and whatnot. Um, it was pretty intense. I mean, but I've actually been watching Super Sentai over the past year and a half. I have at least 15 seasons on DVD from, you know, Mighty Morphin, or should I say Zoo, uh, Zoo Ranger, O Ranger, Car Ranger, um, Decca Ranger, Abba Ranger, just to name a few, uh, Time Ranger. I got a lot of them. Um, Go Kaiger. Ooh, that's a good one. But, to, you know, in that series, it's like, oh, wow, yeah, there's blood, there's death, it's more violent and whatnot. So to just hear Power Rangers say something like die or kill, it really took me by surprise. But in terms of the acting, I would have to say this. Walter Jones, Zach, was the standout for me, for me. David Yost as Billy... It was so good to see him back in the role. C clearly, this special felt like it was their special. I mean, yes, it involved everyone. Obviously, some people have bigger roles than others, but even when Cat and Rocky showed up, I'm like, yeah, don't look, don't get me wrong, folks. I get it. I, if, if things were done the way I wanted to, I would have loved to have all the OGs back, but... I'm glad that this special did a job in terms a good job in terms of representing all the different eras of the Mighty Morphin team. I mean, you had the core five and then you had Tommy. Then after that, three of the originals left, and then you had the uh new trio, Rocky, Adam, Aisha. 
and then later on in the series, Kim left, and then you had Kat, and everybody got represented, even though um, Amy Jo Johnson, well, I mean, technically, if you don't count the mini tribute at the end of the special, which was so heartwarming, if you don't count, um, you know, that, Amy Jo Johnson, Jason David Frank, Austin St. John, uh, they weren't on, they weren't in the special physically, but their characters were before they got kidnapped. And when you had the uh, reserve team come in, I thought that was pretty cool. I'm like, oh, wow, that actually makes a lot of sense. You know, if the OGs can't make it or they're, you know, incapacitated, bring in the next group. Even though I was wondering, look, I know it's a Mighty Morphin special, but I'm like, well, Cat, you know, has the Zeal power still. And we saw her use the turbo powers in the uh, Super Ninja Steel Dimensions in Danger crossover, but... You know, hey, it's Mighty Morphin. I guess the reason is, well, we do need to use the Dino Coins in order to use the Megazord. So I guess that makes sense. Okay. All right. Now, on to uh, Ming, the daughter of Trini in the series. I... <laughs> I don't know how to feel about the character. Here's why. As an OG... I felt some kind of way about the way she kind of talked to Billy and the way she act disrespected Zach not following his orders. But at the same time, her mother was killed and she wants revenge. That makes complete sense. And I love the fact that even though Zordon wasn't in the special, his teachings to Zach and Billy from way back in the day, they still carry that in their lives now as you know full-grown adults so the way that zach was instilling wisdom in ming from zordon i thought was really cool i thought that was really cool now when it comes to ming fighting putties and whatnot i thought that was kind of stupid because of the fact that it's like look I get you want revenge. You know, I can't say that I had a parent vaporized by an evil robot witch. But if you see veteran rangers who are morphed getting their ass whooped and in your mother's case actually dying, what makes you think that you can defeat them? After like one year, I mean, obviously, I, I'm guessing her mom taught her tech, you know, martial arts while she was growing up. And then, you know, the year after she was killed, she did like intense, you know, training. But what makes you think you can win? That's all I'm saying. It, it's like. It, it, it kind of felt dumb. I think another thing that had me going, wait, what is when the putties were attacking all over the globe and they were at the juice bar. And the juice bar is full of people. And Ming is actually doing a somewhat decent job holding her own against putties. And she tells everyone, hey, everyone, get out of here. I got this. And it's like everybody goes. And I'm like, yo, there are some. Uh, it looked like there were some guys in there that were at least Ming's age or older. And you would think they'd be like, yo, we can help out, too. And I and look, I get it. You know, the age of, oh, well, it's all woke and, you know, males being, you know, brought down where a male can't save a female and blah, blah, blah. You would think there'd be a couple of people who'd be like, hey, let's help hold them, the putties all so everybody else can escape. No, it was just her. And you could argue, well, Jeremy, I mean, think about it this way. She was actually doing better holding her own than anybody else. So and they're like, oh, yeah, well, we can use this chance to escape. And I thought that was pretty messed up. And then when she takes out the morpher, I felt so bad because in th this was probably my favorite moment of her character in the film. When she took out the morpher and it's like, oh yeah, I'm about to show y'all something. It's morphin' time, Sabertooth Tiger. And nothing happened. <laughs> Look, and again, if you grew up with Power Rangers, not even necessarily 90s kid, maybe you didn't grow up with Mighty Morphin, but by the time you were born, and, you know, were of age to actually comprehend, like, at least the little things of television shows, like age, you know, three to six or whatever. 
maybe you're watching Dino Thunder or uh, Mystic Force or whatever, you know what it was like <laughs> when you begged your mom to get you a Morpher or any sort of Power Ranger toy as a kid. And when you would use it like they did on the show and nothing happened, that was the moment I loved this character. I'm like, yep. <sighs> We've all been there, kid. And then she proceeds to get whooped until Rocky and Zack show up. And just like the self-awareness of... This felt like RPM. If you ever watch RPM, that was a very self-aware series. There were a lot of nods to like, you know, pop culture references like... Yo, why is this man, like, breakdancing when he's fighting? Or, you know, too much pink energy became a meme in the community. And, you know, things like that. But, um, Robo Rita's origins was pretty cool. I like the idea of, oh, wow, Billy and Alpha were trying to bring Zordon back after his sacrifice in Power Rangers in space. But as a result, they got Z-Wave energy, but it was actually the residual evilness of Rita brought back and it took over alpha 8's body and became robo rita and i'm like that actually makes sense i like the way that worked out not to mention the flashback of that led directly into the beginning of the special when billy's being attacked it all comes together but a couple things this move this special it did some things where I'm like, oh, wow, these characters are acting smarter than they did in the original series. But then there were moments of pure stupidity where I'm like, wait, why didn't you act with the same level of intelligence you did like three seconds ago? Case in point. <sighs> Robo Rita's plan, it does seem a bit convoluted and, eh, you know, hey, what I'm going to do is I'm going to steal Ranger powers. And use the ranger power to open up a time warp text or something. To go back to when I was released from my dumpster. And then give myself all of the information I have now. Or basically I guess Robo Rita would go back herself. And then stay in that time. To pretty much guide her past self on what to do. Pretty much so you don't end up like in a robot body like me. So her plan was to kill the rangers in their sleep before Zordon ever picked them to become Rangers in the first place. Now, that would do all kinds of crap to the space-time continuum because the Mighty Morphin team was a core team in the not just the franchise, but the Power Rangers universe, and disrupting the flow of that team would just have so many ripple effects across the timelines. Now, that's a good plan. And it pretty much, you know, was the thing where people always said, wait a minute, Lord Zed and Rita, they always knew who the Rangers were and, you know, where they went to school. Like, why not send a monster to, you know, crush their houses or, you know, to destroy the school or something or the juice bar? They rarely have ever acted with such confidence. So now it's like, in your sleep, I will kill you. Well, I mean, regardless of how effective the original team was they aren't the only teenagers in angel grove i'm pretty sure zordon and alpha could have found five more teams i mean it just seems like instead of killing those teams why not i don't know attack the command center or something like that maybe send down more than one monster at a time it just felt like her plan was a bit convoluted but whatever so on top of that it was Jason, Tommy, and Kim who were kidnapped and their powers are drained. And then you had, uh, what, what was it, the Minotaur and S the Snake Monster that were revived as mechanized versions of themselves. And they went around fighting rangers. And there was the Bandora pro Protocol, which is Bandora, the Japanese name of Rita Repulsa and uh, Zoo Ranger, or Zoo Ranger. And there were all kinds of Easter eggs. Oh, Terra Venture, the Astro Mega Ship. Um, Mariner Bay and the list goes on pretty much you know all the locations of other ranger teams in the in the world and there were putties being you know called out all across the planet basically they had a tracker whenever rangers were morphed these two monsters go after them and capture them and put them in the machine to you know speed up the process to create the time portal now we had interesting power rangers on the portal display because they have been captured 
We had gold and red from Beast Morphers, which is strange because I thought that Ranger team was in a different universe, but apparently not. I'm assuming all the Ranger keys or the Ranger figures we saw were of captured Rangers from the main universe. Then we had uh, Lost Galaxy, which I'm guessing those Rangers teleported to Earth in order to help out. Um, I mean, they were on Marinoi, if I'm not mistaken. But then again, Leo, he was in the final episode of Super Mega Force on Earth. Him and Damon, so... And Caron. I, I mean, I guess they came to Earth in order to help fight, or did Putties get... Well, no, it was said Putties were all over the world, and the Bandora Protocol was to get Rangers from all over to help out across the planet where the Putties attacked. I don't know. Um, then you had Wild Force Silver, which I'm like, or the Lunar Wolf Ranger. How the heck does he have his powers when um, Princess Shayla took the Wild Force Growl Phones and the Jackets? I'm still bitter about that at the end of that series. But then again, the Wild Force team were at the Legendary Battle, so I guess the Rangers did get their powers back. I don't know. And yeah, it was just weird, but the Easter eggs are cool. And then we had Dino Thunder, White, and Red. They were captured as well. Sheesh. And I'm just like, these monsters, there are only two of them, and I don't know. Maybe it's because they only captured a couple of rangers per team and just left as opposed to taking down the whole squad. Now, going back to what I said earlier about the characters sometimes acting smart but then acting dumb right after. After they went to Tr uh, not, um, Trini's grave in the cemetery during the one-year anniversary... And they captured three of the five Rangers. Billy and Zack were the only ones left. And I'm just thinking, capture them. There is nothing stopping you from capturing them right now. And it gets to the point where they, it's laughable that they're able to escape in the rad bug. And they're driving off. And the monster are like, you think you can get away? And they teleport in front of behind the vehicle. And then they fly off. And I'm thinking, and the reader's like, ooh, good play, Cranston. <laughs> but it's not enough to save you until next time. You can blast the car. We've seen you use your wand to release energy blast at least half a dozen times. Do it! I get it. They had to let him go for the sake of the story, but it's so stupid. Okay, now in terms of Billy's plan, Okay, we're going to use the metal bodies of the monsters against them and then trap them to a giant magnet. You know, something that's used at a junkyard to move large metal objects. Good plan. But instead of destroying them, you use them as bait in order to, I guess, get Robo Rita to leave the palace so the rangers can sneak in to see what the device is and hopefully save the other rangers. However, when they get inside, they realize, oh, we got to destroy the snake monster to destroy the snakes that have our friends, you know, wrapped up to this device. Because Ming's whole thing was, wait, you're just going to let them live? Like, why don't you destroy them? We need them for the plan. But do you really need them for the plan? Because think of it this way. If you destroyed the monsters, then Rita would probably come down herself. And that's, oh yeah, that's another thing. It was cool to see Rita fight the Rangers because in the original series, she never really did. Now, in Jew Ranger, Bandora, we actually got to see her use her powers a lot more. In Power Rangers, all we did was have Rita cast a spell here or there, complain about a headache, and throw her wand down to make the monster grow. But in this series, she, I mean, in this special, she actually does stuff, which I think was pretty cool. But... I'm thinking, yeah, I mean, haven't you guys faced enough monsters to know, like, oh, this, I mean, various ranger teams, oh, the entire town got poisoned by this monster, or this ranger was turned to stone, or this ranger is being mind-controlled. We have to destroy the monster who caused all this in order to reverse the effects. So why didn't you think of that from the beginning? That That's something that kind of, you know, puzzled me. Then on top of that, you had Robo Rita who was about to blast Billy, and all the rangers were unmorphed for some reason in the palace. I mean, 
obviously they weren't morphed in order to avoid being tracked but when it got to the point where rita and the monsters had come back to the palace you morph but that's always been a complaint of mine in power rangers where it's like yo there's a whole army in front of you why the hell are you going in there unmorphed i get it runtime original footage blah 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 but in terms of common sense morph if you can morph morph i get the whole oh no we've ran out of power we can either run oh we can't escape we have to fight that makes sense but in terms of you clearly have your morphers morph morph so billy gets hit and then rita's about to go in for the finishing blow the same one that you know the same kind of attack that destroyed trini she fires it and then Ming jumps in front of the blast in order to protect Billy because she's had a grudge against him the entire film because, yeah, it technically was his fault that Robo Rita came back or Rita's spirit evilness came back, took over Alpha, attacked, and then the Rangers came to help. Then, you know, when he was about to be killed, Trina took the blast for him. Now, she's had a thing against Billy the entire special. Also, I kind of found it weird that Robo Rita destroyed Trini and then vanished. And the Rangers, it took over a year for them to find out where she was. Wouldn't your first instinct be to go, hey, she's probably, you know, back on the moon, you know, where her palace was. That never crossed their minds. Not to mention the Mighty Morphin team. We know for a fact they are in contact with all the other Rangers. And you're telling me it took a full year and they never found out what Robo Rita was doing, where she was at, what she was up to. That makes no sense at all. But regardless... um. One thing about the special was it was really fast paced, so it felt like there really wasn't a lot of time to kind of sit on certain things, but I get it, you know, pacing and whatnot. Maybe this was like a mini series, like, oh, here are seven episodes, but I think that uh, it didn't make a lot of sense that it took a whole year. So from there, we got, oh yeah, the command center is actually built underneath Billy's Cranston Industries so you know Billy has his own you know like tech company and whatnot which is pretty cool and then like the Batcave if you will is the command center which I think is pretty awesome um I, I think another thing to consider here is the fact that Ming oh yeah she did rescue a guy um also for those who are part of the LGBTQ community or allies a big moment was the fact that Oh, there was a um, same-sex couple in the show. So Ming had stolen the rad bug in order to go help, which, again, was pretty damn dumb. And she saw this guy screaming for help because his car had been flipped over. He's like, help, help, they're after my boyfriend, help. And I'm like, okay. Because at first I thought this was a trap. I thought it was a trap. And Ming keeps driving, and she sees a group of putties attack, attacking this uh, guy. Oh, yeah, also interracial, same race couple. Uh, so this uh, uh, white guy has, like, you know, I don't know, like a wrench or something or a pipe. He's, like, you know, trying to use that to kind of fight off the putties. Now, F, and then, you know, Ming runs over the putties because she tells the guy, hey, move out of the way, move out of the way, and then she runs him over the rat bug. Also, a cool effect with the putties, whenever they're defeated, they don't, like, you know, just zap away and teleport out. No, they turn into, like, stones, but in this case... They were like actual putty mud when they got hit by the rad bug. And then she flies off and waves back at the couple as they embrace. Um, I thought it was weird, not the representation stuff, but I'm like, why was that dude being attacked by putties? Now, at first, I thought it was a ranger. You know, like, oh, okay, like the, the guy's boyfriend was actually a past ranger that was being attacked. But no, these are just two random characters. At first, it didn't make sense to me, but I'm like, well, the putties are attacking everywhere, so I guess that, you know, they were just the unfortunate victims of a putty attack. So, it actually does make sense, because the putties, yo, they were, we saw putties, like, throwing a, uh, what, like a woman off of a uh, staircase off a high place, and, you know, people were being thrown around. Yo, people were getting beaten up, and I'm like, yo, we never really see this in the uh, actual series, which I thought was pretty cool. Um... 
I mean, yeah, we kind of saw stuff like, you know, in space during the big invasion and, you know, RPM when people were being literally killed or turned into like robot cyborgs and whatnot. But, you know, in Mighty Morphin Power Rangers, we never really saw like, oh, wow, it's like if this person falls, they will literally die. I do believe they did something like that in Mystic Force or something. But, um, yeah, in any case, this special was special. I know I'm going on on a tangent. I might do a live stream later to talk about it. But, you know, I didn't really like the Zord battle. I, I, I like the original Zord footage, the CGI stuff. It wasn't bad. It's just not what I'm accustomed to. But, you know, for what it was, it was pretty good. And then the um, tribute at the end of Truy uh, uh, and Jason David Frank. I'm sorry if I butchered the name. Uh, Truy Trang, um, it was amazing. It was short, sweet. But you could tell the tribute to the Yellow Ranger was throughout the entire special. But at the ending, it just hit hard and... It just shows you like, you know, hey, we grew up watching these people, but they're people too. We're getting older, and as we get older, sad to say, we're going to lose more of our heroes. You know, voice actors, you know, celebrities, musicians, whatever. It, it That's life. But overall, this was a great special. I can see myself revisiting it, you know, time and time again. Oh, we did get a brief bulk and skull cameo. Apparently, they had like a sandwich or something, like a sandwich shop or whatever. But, um... The music, oh, Ron uh, Wasserman's music scores throughout the special were great. And, um, yeah, that's really all I got because if I keep talking, I'm going to be talking for as long as the special was. But let me know your thoughts on Once and Always in the comments section below, and I'll catch you in the next one.